Hi, I'm Ben, Ben Avery, and this is Strangers and Aliens from strangersandaliens.com. Strangers and Aliens is an audio podcast and video series about the intersection of science fiction, fantasy, faith, and Christianity. And today I'm going to talk about and do an unboxing, unbagging, I don't know. I don't know, but I wanted to talk a little bit about just uh, science fiction from my childhood. And uh, that's what this book is right here. I have not opened it yet. And I don't know, uh, I don't know what this is going to do for me when I do open it. But there are certain books that I remember from my childhood that had a, a big influence on me. One of those books is this one right here. This is not the copy that I had when I was a kid, but it is the edition that I had when I was a kid. I saw this at a library bookstore for 10 cents when I was in fifth grade and asked my dad if I could get it. And I got it along with a couple of Star Trek books, books about, um, oh, actually, again, uh, not uh, the exact copy that I got, but this is one of them that I got as well from that same library sale. And they also had the Star Trek movie adaptations. But anyway, this was my introduction to Isaac Asimov. And I plan to do an episode about the Caves of Steel by Isaac Asimov, because this is something that engaged me as a young science fiction fan, but it also engaged me as a young Christian. And there's some interesting stuff in here that um, that just really uh, stuck with me. And so um, now I have a, a newer volume of it that I read most recently, but I found this at Half Price Books uh, and I just, I had to, I, I had to get it because I'm like, that's the book, that's the one, he's got the arm and everything, it's so cool. So I've been on the hunt for two things from when I was in middle school. And one of those things is a story that I remember, and I don't know if I will ever find it, but listeners, viewers, if you know what I'm talking about, I would love for you to let me know what it is I'm looking for. But I remember a science fiction anthology from my eighth grade library in Troy, Ohio. It was the only year I lived in Troy and the only year I went to that, that school. But in that eighth grade library in Troy, Ohio, there was a short story in a science fiction anthology uh, about a guy who I think was a private detective. I'm not sure. And he may have come from a mirror universe. Again, I'm not sure. I just know that his heart was on the other side of his body. So when he got shot in the heart, it was okay. So shot through the heart, but it's okay because... My heart's on this side and I'm taking the song too far already. Probably just singing the first word of that song was taking it too far. Um, and I'm not worried about copyright strikes. I'm just worried about it being stupid. But anyway, uh, I remember that short story and I would love to rediscover it and just find out what was that story. It just stuck with me. That particular part of that story stuck with me. And the other thing from that library is this book right here. Now that library was a great library. Um, I, uh, I do remember running through the library and the librarian was just, she's a great woman. And she, uh, librarians always liked me because I was one of those kids who was just always in the library actually reading the books. And um, I remember running through the library with my friends because the five minute warning bell had rung. And instead of going around the library, we ran through it. She stopped us and she said, surely you boys are not running through the library. <laughs> And just two nights earlier, we had watched Airplane on TV. And I just looked at her. And I can't believe I had the guts to do this. But I just looked at her and said, oh, yes, we are. And, and don't call me Shirley. And she laughed. We laughed. We all laughed together. And it was a good thing because I could have gotten in big trouble for my smart mouth. But that library. It's also, I read a bunch of books about UFOs. I read a bunch of books about psychic phenomena. I read a bunch of books about uh, Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot. I was totally into that stuff back then. And then I was also, you know, checking out the science fiction anthologies. And so here in my hand right now that I'm going to open live in front of my camera and then post later. Uh, but I'm going to open it right now and just doing this unboxing. <laughs> the pull tab didn't quite do the job that it needed to do. But I, this is a book that, <clears throat> oh, great. Now I can't get it open. So I have not opened this. I've not looked at it to see much about it. I don't know if the story I'm thinking about uh, with the, the heart thing was in here, but this is one that I remember, especially from that library because of some of the pictures that were in it. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. More science fiction tales. I don't remember if I actually read science fiction tales, but this is more 
science fiction tales. And what's interesting about this book is that I remember looking through it. I remember reading through it, taking it home from the library. But it's really the pictures that, that I remember most of all. Because I remember this one. I remember this being a, a picture that bothered me. This is not the picture that I was looking for, though, when I was uh, trying to find this book. And the picture that I was uh, that really stuck with me when I was trying to find this book, although actually this I remember sticking with me this year, the girl with the baseball bat fighting a monster. Um, let's see if I can find the picture that is the reason why I bought this book. And it's this picture right here, this four-armed man. I had been searching online for this four-armed man. And so finally I did the right, <laughs> the right Google search and it brought up this book in an image search, it brought this book up and, and this picture here. And yeah, so I, I can't wait to sit down and, and just kind of read through some of these old stories I remember reading when I was a kid. doesn't look like there's any stories in here about anyone who is a private detective with a heart on the other side. Um, but here's the other thing that I find so fascinating about this book, and that is that I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know it until I found the eBay listing uh, that this book was edited by Roger Elwood. Now, who's Roger Elwood? Well, Roger Elwood is a science fiction editor and writer and then also a Christian novelist as well. And he's someone who, for a short period of time, was kind of a little bit of a mentor to me in the past and so to find the, this book that was influential to me in my adolescence uh, was actually edited by him as well. Now, first of all, the odds of this happening are pretty high. He edited a ton of things. Um, he edited a ton of books. And there's actually a series that he edited, an anthology series called Continuum, that we, we moved a year ago. And I can't find it. I really want to find it because I want to reread it. Um, cause I've just been on that, that kick right now of just reading just old, old science fiction, but, uh, Continuum was a series of four books and it was an anthology, but it was an anthology of serialized stories. And so each story in each volume of the anthology, of the anthology continues in the next one. And so basically it's like getting, a, you know, a monthly, uh, comic from the rack of like eight different titles. And so you get, just get the next part of the story in the next one. So yeah, so Roger Elwood is somebody that um, I've had some interaction with. He came and when I was working at Bethel College, now Bethel University, um, he came and was the writer in res residence. And I went to Red Lobster with him a couple times and spent some time uh, just chatting with him about writing, chatting with him about comic books. There is a Roger Elwood who wrote comic books. I don't know if it's the same one, but I did, after he left, I found a comic book in my collection that was written by Roger Elwood. And then later on, I found some comic book anthologies that were adaptations of old comic story or old science fiction stories that that comic anthology was edited by him. And so I can't help but think that it was probably the same Roger Elwood. And I really wish I would have had a chance to talk with him about the comic book stuff that he did because I was just starting to get involved in comic book writing at that time. It was just before I was uh, became uh, a published comic book writer with uh, with the Hedge Knight. So so anyway, I'm, I'm excited to uh, just read through short stories. So it's the kind of thing that I'll just be able to kind of read one story at a time uh, every, every so often. Uh, but it's this picture. This one, for some reason, that four-armed guy in the bar. <laughs> I just remember it being like a, like a, um, a sailor, you know, situation and, and they're like this is the the tavern on the, on the planet i don't remember anything about the story other than other than that but this picture stuck with me and yeah and then as i was looking online at the um at the different pictures of the pictures inside this book i was like oh i remember that oh i remember that oh i remember that and, and honestly i mean this picture right here that's ah, so cool. <laughs> so cool. So, yeah, more science fiction tales, crystal creatures, bird things, and other weirdies. Edited by Roger Elwood. We live in a time where it's not a matter of just accidentally finding things at a flea market or at an antique shop, but you can just pop in some keywords and find the things and put it on your shelf, get it delivered right to your door. What an amazing time we live in. There's a lot of bad in this world, but then, 
it's just really easy to <laughs> buy nostalgia, which I, that might be a bad thing too. Well, anyway, head over to strangersandaliens.com or put in Strangers and Aliens on your podcatcher of choice and you can hear us talk about nostalgic topics and movies and comic books on our audio podcast. And until next time, I just want to say thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you so much for reminiscing with me. Oh, I forgot about that. Look at that back picture there. That's so evocative, isn't it? Like, that's so cool. And then the other thing, you, look at that. You got the cowboy. Now, obviously, this is not all the same story, but the cowboy, the spaceship, you know, he, he's riding toward a pterodactyl. <clears throat> okay. It actually would be fun to, like, take a... a take covers like this of anthologies where they have elements from all the stories in the anthology and, and write a story that this picture illustrates. It is a fun exercise. Okay, enough about that. I want to say once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for spending time with me. And until next time, wherever you are, wherever you're going, Godspeed.